Hello and welcome to Morning Coffee with Mad Dog Merv. Today we are back out in the patio area enjoying this beautiful morning which it is absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what we got going on on the channel, shall we? Not bad. Some morning coffee. Mad Dog Merv today. We've got our French roast this morning Bagel. again. I wonder if I'm, I'm a big fat guy. I mean, and then they go. I always had a schmear, a schmear, a schmear, a schmear. Uh, oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. Uh, I have no clue. And I got a bunch of chores to do. Oh, who wants to do that? Today I'm going to skip the shout out. Uh, sorry, I just haven't been doing a lot on YouTube uh, this last week. So um, I'm, I'm going to forego it this week and we'll hopefully pick it up again next week. Oniqua School. I know, very interesting name. Its spelling is, uh, it, it's hard to pronounce. Uh, there's a lot of similar names here in this, in this area. Ochre Mountains and, you know, things like that. But Oniqua was named after, <clears throat> and again, I can't remember. I, I, I used to know this stuff by heart, but, you know, my old brain. Uh, it was either a one of those Native American chiefs, or it was one of the uh, splinter tribes, as I call them, the, um, the splintered off like the the Shoshone or the uh, the Paiutes, something like that. I can't remember which. And for those of you who know, please forgive my brain for being the way that it is. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it was named after some Na a Native American or some Native Americans. Um, here locally and when that school was built way back in the early 1900s um, it was to alleviate there was more people kind of moving moving out to this rural part of the the valley which is now where i live and a lot of you know it's urban but <clears throat> you know back then it was full of farms and whatnot and there were a few small schools, like four-room schools or two-room schools, that were uh, not a lot, but there was a couple of them uh, out here in this area. Let's just put it that way. There wasn't very much because there wasn't a big need. The picture that was taken from Ensign Peak in that video that you can kind of see the valley is absolutely amazing. You can see some of the roads that are still in in existence you can see roads that are no longer in existence <clears throat> excuse me uh you can see the jordan river and how it used to wind so much out through this this area back in 1952 after a huge flood uh, they decided to take the so many bends out of the river make it straighter so that it was it would flow better so they wouldn't have flooding out in this area and after World War II is really when this area boomed. They started building a lot of homes out here. Um, but previous to that, <clears throat> like I say, it was more of a rural type area. And this Oniqua School was built um, by the Salt Lake City School District to um, kind of take care of the whole northwest area of, of, the, uh, of the city. So, unfortunately, I never got to go in the building because it was long gone by the time I was, uh, <clears throat> I mean, they closed it in 72 and sold shortly after. And shortly after that, it was torn down and it was purchased by the LDS Church. They had uh, built <clears throat> a big stake center there because they, they were growing out in this area. And so they built this, this big magnificent state stake center and uh, also used it for uh, uh, for a chapel so it was a <clears throat> excuse me quite the quite the piece of land um, for them to be able to get a hold of it's uh, interesting how that neighborhood still has a lot of those old homes uh, there's a couple of those old homes that have like a store front built onto it uh, there in the neighborhood back in the 
old, old days when they used to do those kind of neat things, those little neighborhood stores, but before 7-Eleven, <laughs> before 7-Eleven and Circle K and all those others. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that piece. I know uh, sometimes if you're not from here, and even if you're from here, a lot of people aren't into that kind of history, but um, if you're not from here, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. <clears throat> it would be nice to have pictures, I know, of the interior. Uh, unfortunately, nobody ever thought ahead uh, back in those days and took pictures. Uh, very, very rarely do we have any pictures of the interior of the older school buildings. <clears throat> uh, the high schools, we have some because they had these commercial uh, companies come out and, and do that, which was great. But elementary schools, it just wasn't something they did. So. Anyway, I hope it was something enjoyable you guys had. Uh, I hope you found enjoyable. Sorry guys, I got a frog in my throat today and he just keeps croaking. <laughs> um, the uh, Kit Hoarder stash, we looked at that. Uh, and again, I can't remember, how's that? I can't remember the manufacturer. It's one of the, one of the many Chinese companies that trades molds with everybody else every other week, kind of crap. Um, anyway <laughs> uh, model collect or something like that is the uh, if you go to buy it online in places but you look at the sprue and it says it's a whole other company and just oh my gosh but I don't know much about flames of war the game um, haven't haven't been into it at all but seeing this really cool uh, paper panzer looking tank and then having the Japanese markings the Japanese machine guns on it. I'm like, oh, yeah <clears throat> That's right up my weirdness alley. So uh, I had to pick that one up It looks pretty easy to build and Yes, I could probably add some weld seams real real simple to it um, To enhance that we'll see what I wind up doing, but it looks like a pretty pretty simple build it's just a neat looking tank for something that didn't exist <clears throat> kind of goes along the concept of the uh, the e-series tanks that uh, Germany was de was in the process of developing that was going to be kind of a uh, universal if you will tank you just added a few things here or there to make it a medium lighter or, or, you know whatever um, very similar to an E75. I forgot that the E50 design had less road wheels, but more along the E75 design, which was, <clears throat> again, similar to the King Tiger, the Tiger II. Uh, much different uh, deck arrangement, and of course, uh, you know, fantasy turret and all that cool stuff with some big, huge gun. And it's just neat looking, in my opinion. So we are going to get building that before long. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll have a build video on it before the end of the year. We'll see, <clears throat> but it's just weird enough that it was was absolutely perfect for me to pick up. So I hope you guys like that. Um, I don't know. Has anybody even seen that out there? Or once you've seen the video, is there an interest in that kind of stuff? So anyway, okay. So this week on the channel, I'm gonna try to get this finished today. Uh, doing some figures uh, I felt inspired once I did that grave side scene that was uh, supposed to portray my dad and a <clears throat> and a, uh, a spirit of, of, a, of a friend um, I was going through my other figures <clears throat> doing some painting and I decided hmm I've got figures here that I can do some little vignettes and it popped into my brain. Uh, let me back up real quick. Not long ago was the anniversary, the seven year anniversary of my dad's passing. And right before he passed, a few months before he passed, he had done an interview with um, a couple of my, a couple of my girls, and their families uh, were gathered together for an event and 
he did a little interview with them and told them his war stories and a few other things. But he, to hear his voice and to hear how he tells the story is, uh, is what really gets me. And I know these stories because he used to tell them to me almost like bedtime stories <laughs> when I was a little kid. So I knew them very well. But the, I, wanted, I thought, I ought to do some scenes from these stories that he's talking about. So I got to work on that. Uh, it's been a couple weeks that I've been working on it. It's taken an incredible amount of time. I'm modifying some old Tamiya figures for the most part <clears throat> because they have the, the closest poses to what I'm after. Um, and that's taken some work. And then getting them painted up making the little vignettes so uh the i should have one of them finished today and we will have a show on that so we're gonna have a show on figure figure painting because i'm gonna use some new paints um a new technique for faces that you guys might like it's fairly simple and you know hopefully you like the results so that's gonna be tomorrow's show on the kit hoarder stash, I'm not sure, probably some figures. I do have a bunch of uh, figure sets that I've come across recently that uh, I've, I've already done some uh, videos on, so we'll see. Uh, but we will have something for the kit hoarder stash. So last week, <clears throat> I talked to you about how the winds had torn down everything out here. and So I spent my, my day, after talking to you folks, getting everything set back up because we were going to have a family birthday party for two of my daughters. Um, and I spent the day getting everything perfect. It was beautiful out here. Had a couple of my animatronics out here. Um, it, it was, it was a nice looking, look, looking little setup. Get cooking and about 30 minutes before we were to start this huge thunderstorm comes through and just wrecks the place. <laughs> I can laugh about it now. I was so pissed. I've got company coming over. I've got, um, you know, my daughter's in-laws coming over. Um, I'm out here cooking at the barbecuer and it starts raining. <laughs> Not real heavy, but enough that, you know, I'm getting damp while I'm cooking hamburgers and dogs. They turned out great. The party, not so much. <laughs> um, bless their hearts, they were nice enough to come out and, and sit with me in the wind and the dark and, you know, the sprinkles and eat, and eat dinner. <laughs> uh, but then we all scurried in the house and packed on in there and tried to visit, which was tough. But anyway, um, so it's that time of year, like I said, when the monsoonal moisture comes and we get... The weather changes every every hour, it seems like here. So um, that's what's been going on. I've been working on some of the animatronics that I've purchased recently. Uh, we will go over that probably next week uh, for our kickoff for Halloween, uh, the Halloween season. Uh, of course, been working on these uh, this project I was telling you about. Um, doing these little vignettes and I was watching um, Band of Brothers again now I know you wonder God, how many times can you watch things well guess what every time I watch that I pick up something or listen to it while I'm working on a project I pick up things that I didn't necessarily pick up on before and between that and then I was listening to the recording I had of my dad talking about his war experiences, I could pick up little teeny things here and there. And then I was able to start piecing together more things that, that I never knew. You know, my dad took for granted because he lived those things. There were always some little teeny details that you never got. And those little teeny details turn out to be kind of big things. Uh, like for example, just real quick, in that, uh, in that graveyard scene, uh, the fellow who is the, the ghost is supposed to be the ghost of the lieutenant that my, my dad spoke so highly of. 
he'd received a field commission uh, there on Luzon. What I didn't make the connection on until I rewatched all this stuff several times is that he had been the platoon sergeant. Now, platoon is a leader over, uh, the platoon is basically three um, rifle squads <clears throat> in, the, in the army during World War II, more or less. And so <clears throat> you could kind of expand that out about 36 men, uh, led by a lieutenant, and the non-com was usually uh, uh, you know, some, some form of a sergeant. Uh, well, <laughs> guess what? Uh, that guy had been the platoon sergeant and then was promoted to lieutenant. Um, guess who got promoted up from corporal to sergeant um, due to you know good behavior, good leadership, all that kind of stuff in a very short time? Yeah, my dad. And the reason his foxhole was right here and the other guy's foxhole was right here, um, yeah, he was the platoon sergeant at the time, my dad. I never knew that. He never really said that. Um, but in his story, he had made mention of something that, uh, that I picked up on, that he, you know, putting all this evidence together, I didn't know. I, I didn't know until just a couple days ago that my dad was the platoon sergeant when this uh, lieutenant had, had passed away. So that was kind of interesting, that something I never knew about dad. Um, there's other things in there, but um, I'll save them for the videos, and hopefully you guys will find those figure videos interesting. I'm trying, you guys know I love enamels, and enamels to me are, are king, and so I like to use um, acrylic washes. Well, because enamels are getting harder to get, especially in the colors I need, and the ones that I've got, they're, they're dying, they're, they're, they're solidifying. So I'm having to go to the acrylics. And so I'm choosing the, for figures, the third gen uh, AK paints, and I love them. I, I think they're great, the colors are good, um, they go on well. And I've done a tutorial on using those for the face before, but there's a technique, a little change in the technique that I want to share with you guys. So that's what I'm getting at is this, this uh, technique change that's really simple and they turn out pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. You guys have the rest of a great day. I am going to get busy on some figures and we will see you tomorrow.